thank you so much for spending time with me today. Are you well? I am very well, thank you. Excellent. Um, well, it's been 10 years since the Chelsea Cinema was making a scene. Um, does it still leave you with um, emotions about it? Yes, it does. Uh, and I spent 40 years of my life there. And ironically, when, uh, when Wallace's took over, the, won the lease to, to run the... Uh, and no one ever thought it was going to be uh, closed because uh, Hoyt were losing so much money. Mm. And uh, as uh, you would be aware, that Amoco were going to buy it to build a petrol station. And mm -hmm. uh, then I'd become the longest serving manager in the theatre's history. And 40 I'd be years. 40 years. And nobody prior to me um, uh, were anything like that. And mm -hmm. uh, so it was a, ter a terrific experience. And, uh, and the council themselves back then. Mm -hmm were fabulous. They were a dynamic council and uh, mm. some of the mayors were really good. Gene Wickham was, became a great friend, Coralie Soward. Mm. And, uh, How do those councils compare to the 2010 council? Uh, the 2010 council, uh, it, it went backwards very rapidly. Uh, there was no leadership. Um, the mayor that took over uh, was a, a professional board sitter, mm. had no, no idea of uh, how to run a council and couldn't keep them under control mm. and uh, um, it was just sad really and uh, especially you know I think it's one of the best councils ever the mm. one the ones that I experienced and people like Bill Cooper you know poor old Bill's gone now but uh, uh, what a great man he was and mm. he gave so much to that community yeah indeed well there was so much turmoil back at that period. Uh, the public were outraged at the possible sale of the Chelsea and uh, my understanding is that Wallace was never really given an opportunity to renew the lease. We, we put in, we, we actually had plans because uh, the council had bought the land next door, the house next door. We had plans to build three or four cinemas next door to it um, and restore the existing cinema. Uh, as the heritage masterpiece that it is, mm. and run it that way. And uh, uh, but the the council, then, uh, as we know, because I have read the McPherson report, mm. uh, was made up of some very shifty people. They're all gone now, thank God. Mm. But uh, the last thing I wanted to do was to reward us for exposing them. Yeah. So you would um, you would agree with. It's been alleged, of course, that there was um, corruption and bribery rife within the council at that time. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Well, as I said, I've read the McPherson report and mm. some of them it was stopped by the government at the time, mm. uh, mainly because there were people in the government who were involved. Mm. So uh, they didn't want that all to come out. Mm. Uh, I did put it to Councillor Carbone. Um, I asked him what was the reason for their legal um, uh, representation applying for a suppression order on the McPherson report. And his answer to me was that it was not what was in the report, but it was deemed as an illegal action and uh, by law. And he felt that since they were accusing us of breaking the law, that's what they were accusing them of. And on that basis, it was decided by a judge that that was the case. How much do you think that holds water? I don't think it holds water at all. You know, as corruption's corruption, mm. and uh, you know, the, the McPherson was a pretty intelligent man. Mm. Um, you know, I think those people should have been taken to task. And there were some very good councillors on that council as well, mm -hmm. even during that period. Yeah. But they weren't the majority. Yes, um, it was. Um, it, it was alleged that uh, Rick Powers had uh, undue influence over the council. Do you think that was true? Uh, it was absolutely true. We'd actually seen the CEO at the time passing notes through to him on his car and then Rick Powers uh, would sit in the gallery mm -hmm. and give instructions to his people that he supported to get elected. Wow. It's interesting because I asked Councillor Carbone directly if there was any truth in the allegations that he was having secret backroom meetings with Rick Powers, and he admitted to it. Right. 
he said that as far as I he was concerned, I was having a coffee with a friend, but yes, there were meetings. Does that surprise you? No, it doesn't surprise me at all. Um, Rick Powers, uh, uh, he, you know, he ran a brothel in the city mm -hmm. and he was charged and proven guilty. And uh, he wanted to build a big wall around his house, is how I was told it, mm -hmm. and the neighbours objected. The council knocked it back, so he went up as far as to the High Court and won. He then financed people to stand against the councillors that, that um, not, uh, voted against his wall. Right. That's how I have been told mm -hmm. is, the, is the case. And then he said that the council should not run a cinema. Now, the council are not running a cinema. They never were. Mm -hmm. They wanted to save the cinema because of its heritage value. It, it was, it's the oldest existing cinema, purpose-built cinema, in Adelaide. Mm. And uh, uh, George Bolton was the mayor and Gordon Allen was the city engineer. Mm -hmm. I never met George, but, uh, um, but I did Gordon Allen. And uh, they brought to the attention of the other councillors that Amoco were going to buy the cinema mm -hmm. and build a petrol station. And that's how it all, the council became the, the, the trustee of mm. a heritage building. We won the lease in 1971 and we ran it right through. When we were uh, not given the chance to continue, uh, even with uh, 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 taking out, uh, well, Wallace's were going to spend all of the money to mm -hmm. do it up. They would never ask the council for anything. Mm. And uh, so they gave it to somebody who didn't survive and couldn't pay the rent. And now the council is running a cinema. <laughs> We've come full circle. And, and have just spent one and a half million doing a fabulous job mm. restoring it. So, you know, and I wish them great luck because, you know, they're, they're doing exactly what should have been done right in the first place. Indeed. Um, was it true that uh, Wallace was offered the opportunity to buy the cinema back then? Uh, yes, we were, and uh, and we were often even uh, offered the peppercorn rents, mm -hmm. a whole lot of things. But uh, you know, Mr. Powers and his uh, little entourage, that's not what they wanted. So Wallace would have been open to to that purchase. Yes. Yeah. What stopped it? Well, it was just that we needed approval that we could go ahead with what we wanted to do and no one would give us that approval. I see. So it was a vicious circle. Yes. Indeed. Catch-22 one might say. Exactly, yes. That's extraordinary. Yeah. Wow. The Save the Chelsea Action Group, they were a colourful group of people, weren't they? They were, and I think the council thought that I was a part of that mm -hmm. and I never started that at all. A couple of my staff were on it, on that committee, and, uh, you know, they were the ones there, but uh, that, that later council re retaliated on us. Yeah, right, mm. indeed. Um, it got pretty much like a circus at times. Oh, it's unbelievable. It's like, uh, yeah, well, you've seen it when, you know, when the uh, gallery uh, r chased the uh, councillors up the stairs. <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> and I can remember um, the police uh, being called and the police would stay outside and said, we'll wait here until you can finish your... <laughs> the police realised that, so what was going on? Yeah, um, I, I do remember quite famously the uh, when the public gallery overran the chambers. Yes, yes. It's pretty over the top stuff. Yes, yeah, it's been fabulous knowing you and, uh, you know, stick it up those arseholes. <laughs>